One of my YouTube subscribers, Muhammad, asked, Nick, why don't you use trend lines in any of the pairs that you're using? Well, in today's video, we're gonna discuss why I personally am not really a big fan of using trend lines too often in my trading analysis. Do I use them occasionally? Sure. But in this video, I'm going to explain some of the biggest flaws that I see uh, trend line trading, uh, sort of some of the pitfalls. Let's jump in. Today's video is sponsored by Bybit. And if you're not familiar with Bybit and you're looking for a new broker, let's take a look at some of the awesome offers that they have available. They now have MetaTrader 4, which many traders uh, that watch my channel are very used to. And uh, they also have some incredibly tight spreads and some awesome offers available down below in the description. You can click the link and check it out for yourself. They have no dealing desk. They have 24 seven trading uh, for USDT perpetual contracts and all sorts of other amazing features available. They also, have a copy trading ability so you can actually copy some of the best traders that are available on their platform at the click of a button which is really quite cool they also of course have a major deposit bonus going on right now and using the link in the description right now you can actually get the first first 100 users to sign up with the link down below will also receive a ten dollar bonus as part of the thousand dollar giveaway so take advantage down below if you're looking for a new broker check out Bybit using that link It'll be uh, supporting the channel and also thankful to our sponsor today, Bybit. Welcome back everybody to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nick and I talk all about trading, usually Forex and stocks. And today we're talking about trend lines. You know, the very standard stuff you see in Forex where you're getting the trend line drawn across uh, the chart to try and get an idea of where support and resistance may lie. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the typical support and resistance that many traders are used to is the horizontal stuff, right? Where you see these zones drawn across my screen. Uh, I use that a lot, but why don't I use a lot of trend lines? Well, here's why. When using trend lines, the issue that I see is that when you draw them, there is sort of a lot of subjectivity. Now, technical analysis in general is pretty subjective. And what I mean by that is that one person may, the draw, may draw up the charts a little bit differently than the next person. So how is it, you know, a hard science of where uh, to buy or sell? Well, let me show you what I'm talking about with trend lines. If we were to draw a trend line, let's say that trader A draws a trend line on this chart like this, okay? So this is trader A. And then the next, uh, and actually let's put ourselves in this perspective. So let's, let's, let's start fresh. We'll go right here. And let's say that we're looking at this chart and we're saying, okay, trader A draws a trend line like this using predominantly the closes of the candles. And then trader B doesn't use this previous area, but they use this spot here to draw their area. Now they're going with this trend line. Then another trader comes along and says they like to use specifically the lows and highs of candlesticks to draw their trend lines. Suddenly, what you're very quickly seeing is that there's many different trend lines being drawn in the same uh, chart. For example, this is another one, right, using the lows of the candles, or maybe we draw one from here to here using the closes, then you get something like that. And uh, what you're seeing is that this is a pretty wide arrangement of trend lines in what is supposed to be a fairly particular uh, line of support in this case. And then we could also do the same for looking at tops of the charts too, right? Let's say you're drawing a trend line like this, using the closes, or maybe you're using the tops of the candlesticks, or maybe you're drawing it only from this side of the chart, or maybe to make things even more confusing, you're trading on the four hour chart. And then we expand this out. We say, well, now we have this trend line to consider. And we can draw, you guys can see where I'm going with this. If we draw across the closes, we have this trend line to consider. And then if we draw this trend line, that's a different trend line than all the other ones. Too many, too many, too many, too many. What's up traders? We're looking for more people to join our free Discord channel for Forex traders. Inside, you'll get our weekly watch list. You'll see trades that we're taking with full breakdowns and explanations and so much more. Join us by clicking the link and we'll see you inside the Discord. What you're seeing is that we're starting to get this really messy looking chart. And the problem with, with that I personally have with trend lines is that I don't think that any of the trend lines that I drew here were necessarily just terrible trend lines. What I think that you may have to consider is that people are gonna draw them differently. And if you asked 10 different traders to draw trend lines on the chart, 
you'd probably end up with a lot of different charts. Some would look similar, some wouldn't. Now, let me give myself a counter argument. You may say, well, Nick, look at what happened. You still came up with a pretty good cluster of trend lines in this area. Remember that a lot of technical analysis relies on a self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning a lot of traders are looking at the same thing, and that's why it works. If everybody sort of agrees that this area is their trend line zone, they might start buying in this area. So you could make the argument to counter my thought process that trend lines, similar to horizontal support and resistance, which we'll talk about in a second, is a zone, right? It's an area on the chart rather than a pinpoint spot. Of course, you're gonna have people, I always tell the story, I've, I've told the story a couple times on my channel. When I first got it started sharing my ideas on Instagram and YouTube, I had somebody who was like a big name in the industry at the time, this was years ago, um, tell me that like my trend lines looked like crap and that's why I didn't have a following and that I was an idiot and I sucked at trading and all this and that. And I came back like two years later, the person was still, you know, kind of a jerk and they were like, um, you know, they, they were still so quote unquote, you know, right about their trading. You know what I'm talking about? The people who are so arrogant with their trading, that kind of personality, like I know the charts better than everybody else, that sort of thing. Those people, they irk me. And of course you, you probably have been irked by them as well. Anyways, the point is, you know, there's a bit of subjectivity here as there is with all technical analysis. Now I'll tell you what I personally prefer and it's not perfect either, but what I do like is more so the horizontal levels because there is a bit more of a quantifiable, everybody sort of can see it aspect to the horizontal levels and structure points that we can talk about when analyzing the chart. For example, if we were to all look at this same chart, there's something here that's kind of cool. We can all identify, doesn't matter how you choose to look at it, that roughly this is the bottom level of support on the screen right now. Everybody sees that. And that is what matters. When we're talking charts, we wanna identify stuff that everybody sees. If nobody's seeing it, if it's like, you know, like one third of the audience that's using technical analysis actually sees something, it's not very relevant. But we can also all probably agree, I mean, objectively, the high of this screen that we're looking at together, at least this very screen, is right here. So right there, we have two very specific support and resistance levels that everyone can see, everyone can observe and perhaps take advantage of, and that is why it's more valuable to me. If we were to draw a trend line on this same screen, we could start doing our same thing. Maybe trader A draws it like this. Maybe trader B draws it like this, right? Trader C and so on and so forth. Everybody's drawing different trend lines, but the horizontal, support and resistance levels, you can start getting more uh, debatable with that once you start getting you know, more fancy with it. But for the basics here, we see that there's a support and resistance above and below the recent highs and lows of this chart, which is generally where I'm spending most of my time is looking for those sort of setups, the breaks of high and low structure, because that's what everybody is seeing. Now, you could also make an argument that this is uh, sort of a zone of resistance. That's why I generally will draw my support and resistance levels as zones because I know that people are going to draw them differently. If we're using just hard lines, one trader might choose to draw it like this. Another trader using horizontal resistance may choose it like this, right? Another person may say, that's not a good area. We're only going for this area, right? Uh, so on and so forth. So there is subjective subjectivity with all technical analysis to a degree. I just personally like to use stuff that is a little bit more quantifiable. We can all identify that during this range, this is the low approximately, this is the high approximately. Again, I personally, you'll see me doing stuff like this where I draw support and resistance as a zone, right? So I'm drawing this um, as, as zones. But again, I know that a lot of traders are gonna see this because look how many times, this is the four hour chart, so many times the one hour traders and the four hour char traders and the daily chart levels. And this is something too, think about multiple time frames, because you may only trade the one hour chart, but you might also be trading in the same realm that a lot of four hour and daily chart traders are doing as well. So that's why it can be very important to look at multi time frame analysis. This level, you wanna look for the obvious stuff, the stuff that everybody is seeing. Put yourself in the perspective of the average trader, and that's where you wanna be identifying key spots. 
we have a pretty significant high point here. You have lows here very clearly. These are important marks, uh, marks to make up on your chart because <clears throat> they're where everyone is looking. And that is what matters when it comes to technical analysis is because it is relying on a self-fulfilling philosophy to a degree, we need to identify the places that most traders are going to be identifying as well. I hope that this makes sense. This is why personally, I'm not a huge fan of trend lines. It's not that I never use them. It's just that I don't use them as a predominant you know, component to my analysis. For example, like that trend line looks nice to me, but again, someone might draw it a little bit differently and they're saying, nope, the trend line is there. And then, you know, if you take it kind of like how I do with support and resistance, where it's sort of a range, then maybe you're going to do just fine. And truthfully, that's kind of how I use my trend lines is I use them as if I do use a trend line, it's not like a specific exact price point for entry for me. It's just an idea of like, well, this chart is trending lower. And more so what I'll use the trend line for the most is just identifying a series of lower highs or higher lows if in an uptrend simple as that. It's just a way to visually represent that. But for the most part, my entries are going to be more dependent on horizontal significant levels of, of structure, recent highs, recent lows, breakouts, etc. If you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up button down below. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you next time. Looks like it's time for your next trading video. Check out the videos here and here for more free trading content that should help you in your trading journey. We try and keep it real here. So make sure to subscribe for more content that is down to earth realistic forex trading content. See you in the next video.